Hi, I'm Mark Cullen with a do-it-yourself video library explaining how to build a rain garden. This is one in a series of videos produced by Landscape Ontario and Park Lane Landscapes. Rain gardens are a low-impact development technique that can be constructed to manage stormwater on site. In the past, typical residential and public landscape design focused on shedding water off-site and into swales and storm sewers. The result is seen in Ontario's waterways. One of the most effective ways to protect freshwater resources is to capture and reuse rainwater on site, allowing it to percolate into soils. This reduces stormwater runoff, encourages recharge of the water table, and may protect against overloading of the sewer systems, resulting in flooding. This is the Beaver River, which runs right into Lake Simcoe. We're just outside of Beaverton, Ontario. And the river right now is probably down a good three feet from what it would be at peak times, maybe even four feet. Um, but it's certainly lower than it is for the beginning of July, and it's still even June right now. So I think that we're really experiencing a very, very significant drought for this time of the year. All of the rivers that are feeding our lakes on our watersheds are basically taking all of the runoff from any properties. And over time, as we urbanize and we start to put more and more people, there's more and more pressure on our groundwater systems. So that means we're sucking out more water from the groundwater. And then a river that would normally have its headwaters, let's say at point A, is now drying up so that it could be a couple of miles away before you actually see the water in that river. Then on top of that, our urban systems that we've developed where we're putting all of our stormwater from our downspouts, from our impermeable surfaces, roads, parking lots, everything, they're being fed straight into our storm sewers and then those are just going shooting back into our rivers. So every time you have a peak event and you've just suffered this kind of a drought um, and your river levels are low, so they've gone way down, and then you have a peak event, the fluctuation, the change in volume of water in the stream is so significant that you can have a huge amount of uh, sediments getting into the rivers, which is not great for our ha the habitat for fish, etc. But also it's taking a tremendous amount of pollutants and phosphorus into the river and just flushing it straight into the lake. What we want to do is keep the water on the property as much as we possibly can. And this, this property is a very, very large property, but it also gives you an opportunity to see the way Mother Nature would build a rain garden. You know, the land slopes to the embankment onto the floodplain, and then it falls down into the floodplain, but it just naturally forms a little bit of a valley where the water will sit and pool before it gets a chance to go into the river directly. So it has a natural way of percolating into the ground. Um, so you want to sort of simulate that on every residential property that there is. If everybody does their part to keep all of the water that falls on their property on their property, we're going to first of all recharge the water table and then second of all it's just going to be much much healthier for the lakes and streams because we won't have those big runoff problems. Those are the ecological reasons to do it but there are also practical reasons to reduce flooding, uh, to reduce erosion on our rivers and people might think well that's an ecological thing. Um, there, there's one creek near here where they spend 14 million dollars a year dealing with erosion on the sides of the creek. So if you can slow the flow of water into the ground and through the ground and into the creeks, then that helps take money off the, the taxes, off the municipal budget, as well as the uses for the water. So sport use, for instance. I know one of the, the rivers near here, it's 150 million dollars a year that it brings into the economy. So there are practical reasons, economic reasons, to do it as well. With the flooding issue, if everybody does a little bit to try and keep water on their property in a, in a beautiful way, then it protects all of our neighbors as well, and, and conversely they're protecting us. If everybody works together, then there will be less flooding. Um, and, and more beauty, it raises property value, there's all sorts of good that it does. Well the reason we want to profile this type of gardening is so that people will start utilizing rainwater to water their gardens instead of potable water. We're really hoping that people will start using the right water in the right place. So do we really need to use water that's gone through an extensive cleansing process 
to water your lawn. In fact, it's healthier for your lawn if you're using rainwater. And, uh, it's much healthier for the plants. It creates a much, um, much better climate for the garden. Understanding the hydrological cycle is vitally important to making sure the benefits of installing a rain garden are understood and embraced. In our next video, we'll show two examples of community rain gardens that make a big impact.